Hello everyone, welcome to Snowden's demonstration of the new release of Supervisor 8.4. My name's Lindsay Farley, I'm a senior consultant in the geosciences and also the product owner of Supervisor. I'm going to run you through the uh, three new features that we have for Supervisor. The first one will be the Kriging neighbourhood analysis. We've introduced a max key or the maximum number of samples that you can have per hole. After that, I'll take you through the grade tonnage curves for reporting your resource models. And finally, I'll take you through the global change of support, which is um, a check for our model validation. Okay, the first thing I'm going to take you through is the Kriging neighbourhood analysis, the maximum number of samples per drill hole. As normal, uh, set up your tree with your variography and your KNA, so your variography is normal and set up your KNA with the number of blocks, uh, the number of samples that you want, the search that you want and the discretization that you want. To use the maximum number of samples per drill hole, you need to be on the KNA button here and up at the top right hand side there's a tab called params for parameters click on that and about three quarters of the way down on the right hand side there's simply a tick box which says maximum samples per drill hole. To use it just tick it on, uh, you can set the number of samples that you want per drill hole and hit update. Once that's done that's it. If you don't want to use it just simply turn it off and hit update and that will take you back to your original KNA analysis without using the maximum number of samples per drill hole. Okay, the next thing I'm going to take you through is the creation of grade tonnage curves. Um, the first thing we need to do is, as usual, load in our block model. Uh, I've loaded this one in by domain assay and the reason I've done that is because I'm going to demonstrate reporting multiple elements at one set cutoff. Um, you can load it in assay domain but that will restrict you to doing individual grade tonnage curves. Just before I show you the multiple grade tonnage curves, I'll create a grade tonnage curve for both just nickel and just copper. So to load in a grade tonnage curve, just move your mouse over to the nickel, right click add, go down to grade tonnage curve. Over on the right hand side, our tabs for GT curve, it shows a reporting assay. Now this is locked. For this particular example, it's locked on nickel because that is the only element that we're interested in. The next thing we need to do is create a cutoffs. And this is just simply done by filling out this um, form. We can have a start and an end. We'll say 2% nickel and we'll go in steps of 0 0.1. Just simply hit add and all our cutoffs for reporting our grade tonnage curve are automatically put in here. The only other thing that you really need to do is choose your fields that you're going to use for density your block size in the X direction, Y direction and Z direction because this is density weighted. Um, in this case it's automatically picked up my fields which are SG. If you had something different just simply click the drop down tab here and you will be able to choose what it is. Uh, I've used X ink, Y ink and Z ink but if you have something different for the dimensions of your blocks please choose it here. If for some reason you don't have a density value in your block model, you can simply tick on here and have a default density. So for example, if you wanted to have a density of 2.8, you can just simply click on there, but every block will have a density of 2.8. Of course, if you have estimated density into your model, you shouldn't be doing that. Um, once you've set up this tab, just simply hit the update button 
And there we have it. That's our grade tonnage curve for nickel. Um, as with most things in Supervisor, if you want to export this to put into your report, you can just simply right click here, copy to clipboard, copy, and then you can paste that directly into your Word or Excel document, whatever you're using. Um, here on our results tab, down the bottom here, we have a list of our cutoffs, um, the tons, the volume, the reporting assay. Now, in this case, we've only used nickel, but if we're going to report multiple elements, we need to know what the cutoff assay used was, and then we have our grades. That can also be exported if you want to. Um, just right-click, export to a CSV file, and save it wherever you like. We'll go through that process again, but this time we will just do it for copper. So it's just simply a right click, add, go down the grade tonnage curve. Once again, for our reporting essay, we can't choose because we've only got nickel here. Uh, this time we might choose our cutoff creation. We might choose zero to, let's say, 1% copper but this time we'll do some different steps, 0.05. You can add that and all our cutoffs are in here and we won't need to change anything here. Our density and our block dimensions are all set. Just hit update and that's it, a grade tonnage curve for copper. Once again, our results are here, but this time our reporting assay is copper. Now, to report for multiple elements, but at the single cutoff, usually for your main element, to do this, you need to click on your domain, right-click Add, Grade Tonnage Curve. Now, this time, if we come over to our right-hand side and we look at our reporting essay, we now have a choice. So now we can either set cutoff grades using nickel or copper to report nickel and copper. So this time I'm going to choose uh, nickel and I'll use our cutoff creation from before for nickel, 0 to 1 to 0 0.1. Simply add that as before, all our cutoff grades are there. We don't need to change our SG or block size and just hit update. Now this has created our cutoffs and grade tonnage curve for, as you can see here, nickel. Now, if we want to look at our grade tonnage curve for copper using the nickel cutoff, we need to go to our Draw tab, and here we've got Show Assay. This time, I'm going to click Copper. This shows our copper grade tonnage curve, but using the cutoffs for nickel. So if we have a look at our Results tab here, we can see our cutoffs, estimate, tons, volume. Now, reporting assay is nickel. So all the grade tonnage curves have been calculated using nickel as the cutoff. We get our nickel grades plus our grades for copper at that cutoff. The only other thing I need to show you is there is an alternate way to show our grade tonnage curves. Most people use this format, I think, where we have tons on one axis and grade on another and cut off, cut off along the horizontal axis. There's a button over here under our draw trap called Use Alternative Draw Style. This shows our grade on the vertical axis, our tons on the horizontal axis and our grade tonnage curve here with our cutoffs. Uh, I might do this one for nickel and doesn't make much difference. It's just an alternative way to show it. If you don't want to use it, just tick it off. The last thing I'm going to take you through today is the uh, grade tonnage curve for the global change of support, validating your models. Um, as usual, 
we need to have our sample or composite data loaded as well as our block model. Uh, this particular example, I'm going to do domain one. So right click on domain one, add model validation. Over on the right hand side here, we need to choose the model and the variable that we want to validate. Choose those, hit update, and we get our um, graphs and plots. When we've done that, we can go down to our GT curve that we need to set up exactly like we did last time. Um, we need to fill out the cutoff creation. In this case, we'll go from 0 to 2 in steps of 0 0.1. Hit add, that loads in all our cutoffs. Then hit our update button and we get our grade tonnage curve. Now, for the global change of support, there's a tab over here. We need to hit on that tab. Next thing we need to do is hit enable it. Then we need to choose our variograms. Um, it uses the variograms and Hermite polynomials to calculate a theoretical grade tonnage curve. So we can click on this and then we have an option of our variograms and in this case I've used a normal score transform. So we need to use the back transforms. Just click OK. Next thing we need to choose is the number of polynomials. Now, if you want to check this, you can go back to your log probability plot. And on your log probability plot, on the fitting tab, there's a button here, enabled curve fitting. You can tick this on or off as you wish. Um, the default for supervisor is 30 polynomials. And what we're trying to do here is fit that purple line as closely as we can to the log probability plot of our distribution. So the default's 30, and we can just simply start clicking down through here. We can see that this bottom part of our curve is starting to fit a bit better when we drop the polynomials. And if we get to 26, it fits pretty well. So I'm gonna use 26. So we can go back to our GT curve, and we can set this at 26. It will automatically pick up the block size that you've used. So once we've done that, we can hit update. It takes a couple of minutes. Okay, now the screen looks a bit of a mess. The best way to look at this data is if we go to our draw tab. Remember I showed you the alternative drawing style? So you can click on the alternative drawing style. Now for this particular example, we have a D cluster. So it's come up with D clustered grade tonnage curves as well as non D clustered. So I'm just gonna click off the D clustered for now. So what we're trying to do here is this one up the top here with the crosses, this is our point grade tonnage curve. The black one here is the estimate. So our actual estimate that we've done, that is the grade tonnage curve for our estimate. This one in the middle here, the red circles, is the grade tonnage curve for our block size, but using the point data as the beginning. So what we really want is our two grade tonnage curves for our SMU and our estimate to be roughly equal. That way we haven't over smoothed our model. Now you can see here quite clearly that these two grade tonnage curves are a long way apart. Therefore, we have over smoothed our model quite a bit. And if we go back to our model validation plot and have a look at particularly this one here for the X direction, there is not much variance in the block model grades at all. Almost everything is between about one and a half and two and a half. So we go back to our GT curve. Now also, if you do have clustering, it may make quite an impact on your graphs here. So if we click on our declustered, you can see now that these red, tri uh, the, sorry, the blue triangles 
are much closer to the curb. So clustering, if I tick off our non-declustered curves, you can see that they are much closer, but still our estimate has been over smoothed. Now there's a few other things that I need to show you here. First of all is um, this button here, the link cutoffs. So if we do this, we can actually get a line that links up all our cutoffs. Sometimes it's easier to read. Um, we can also adjust our cutoff labels. You can either just turn them off if you wish, or you can adjust the size and the position. Okay. Um, also, there's a whole table of results here if you want to have a look um, more closely at what these results are. Uh, you can see here we have our estimate. Below that we have the point. And below that we have all the grade tonnage curves for the SMU. And then under that we have all the grade tonnage curves for the D-clustered. So you can compare those if you want to. Um, thanks for watching the presentation. If you have any more questions about Supervisor or you need some more support, please don't hesitate to contact support at Supervisor. Thank you. Bye-bye.